Uh, so a few days ago, I put an uh, Instagram story post up on my Instagram stories um, titled Ask Me Anything and I got uh, loads and loads of questions but after a while, like as the day went on, um, I just stopped replying to the, the questions, I stopped doing it and um, I thought, you know what, let's just continue the AMA onto YouTube, also repeat some of the the frequently asked questions in the AMA as well, along with some of the newer questions and uh, there's quite a lot of them. I want to give a bit of an in-depth answer whereas on Instagram stories it was like short and sweet. So I'm going to divide this uh, series into three videos. The first one being social media marketing because that's where the majority of the questions, uh, that was uh, what the majority of the questions were about. Video number two is going to be business in general so lifestyle, uh, lifestyle design mastery business questions, stuff like that, and then the last video will be other, just random questions about me, uh, relationships, family, or stuff like that. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into the first topic, which is social media marketing. There we go. What advice would you give to a new social media marketing agency and where to get the clients at the beginning? So my advice at the start is, well, first of all, just make sure that you really want to do this. There's so many people that try social media marketing, they realize that it's not as easy as people make out, like you do actually have to put in the work. So first of all, be sure that you are willing to put in the work, you, know, you are willing to do it for the long run, not just to uh, like you know, quickly get money, stuff like that. Once you've decided that, once you, are in, you, know, you have decided that you're gonna go all in, you're actually gonna do this for the long term, then you, know, you obviously need to get clients. And I think the easiest way to get clients is to look on freelancer uh, platforms like Upwork.com, like PeoplePerHour.com, Freelancer.com, there's a few more, but those are like the, the three biggest uh, platforms that I know and use myself. And um, basically the reason for this, because a lot of people like to do cold calling, cold email outreach, cold Facebook messenger outreach, stuff like that. But like you already said, you know, it's cold. You know, these people aren't necessarily interested. So first of all, you need to um, convince them that they need social media marketing, they need Facebook ads, they need people to manage their social media pages. And then secondly, you need to uh, convince them that you are the right person for the job. Now, with these people on freelancer websites, you don't necessarily, you know, you don't need to convince them that they need social media marketing because they have already decided that they need it. Otherwise, you wouldn't put a job posting up. So these people, these companies, these clients, they put job posts up on uh, upwork.com, freelance.com, and peoplehour.com. And then all you need to do is apply for that job get on a call with them, convince them that you are the right person for that job and you are basically done. And that is the easiest way to get clients in 2019. Okay, so next question, where do you get most of your social media agency clients from? So like I said in the previous question, you know, the freelancer uh, platforms, that is what we've done at the start. You know, we got so many clients through those freelancer platforms. We were constantly doing outreach every single day. Even you know, even when we had like four, five, six clients, we were still doing, like outreach was such a big part of our day. We just constantly doing it, make sure the pipeline was full. We were constantly in contact with new companies, new agencies, uh, new businesses and stuff like that. And um, like we slowly made the transition into uh, from freelance platforms into referrals. So what we now do is if you get good results for our current clients, we ask them, you know, um, is there anyone in your network that you know, uh, you know, if you're in contact with another business owner, anything like that, you know, is there anyone you know that also needs social media marketing? If so, could you refer them onto us? And if you do, you'll get a discount on your current retainer. Okay, so uh, let's say, for example, they are on a retainer for a thousand a month and we get the, the new clients or the referred clients uh, for a thousand a month as well. We give them either 10% of that retainer or we give them 10% discount on their current retainer, which more often than not is around the same price. And that is how we get a lot of new clients nowadays as well, because our service, like when we were starting out, the main focus was getting as many clients as possible because we wanted that you know, full-time income. We want to be able to quit our jobs. We want to be able to work from home full-time. And now that we're sort of over that first hurdle, now we really do want to focus on quality, you know, focus on that lifetime value of the client, getting long-term results. And because our results are that good, it's so easy to get you know, those referrals because you know, if a client gets good results through us, the first thing they want to do is tell their other 
uh, you know, tell their network, tell the other business owners that they know about the results and that they can also get the same thing. Are plastic surgeons good for SMMA as a niche? Um, I'm not 100% sure you can actually uh, like set up ads through Facebook for this. I'd have to look into it. I've never done it as a niche, but at the end of the day, you need to get those plastic surgeons leads and a great way to do that is through Facebook ads. You can set up lead form ads with Facebook ads. So if it's allowed through Facebook, you'd have to look into the guidelines. If it's allowed, then it's definitely a great niche to do it. Do you use Stripe to take client payments? No, we use PayPal. We have done for a while, actually since the start, I've always used PayPal as like my payment method. Um, I think in the long term, Stripe is probably the best way, uh, to, like the safest way um, to do you know, the, the client payments because there's always that risk that PayPal will block your account and then you know, you've, you've lost your money basically. So um, in the long term, we will make the transition to Stripe, but as of now, we use PayPal. Will you do SMMA forever? Um, it completely depends on how the market develops. You know, as of now, social media marketing is something that I love doing. It's something that I do full time, and I can see if it stays like this, I can see myself doing this for the rest of my life. But you know, the market will develop, and you know, within five years, social media marketing will be completely different. I think in the long term, voice will play a very big part. You can see it now with uh, Google Home, Alexa Voice, stuff like that. I think that will just grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, brands will become a very important aspect of it um, but I think social media marketing will not stay the same as it is now so it depends on how the market develops I will always do something with marketing I will have, always have a marketing agency but you know whether it will be the same way as I do it now I'm not 100% sure When would you decide to outsource and what would you want to get outsourced? So for those of you that don't know, uh, we work with a team, so I do not do the work myself. We actually have a team of experts that can do a much better job than I can, and they basically uh, take over most of the client work. So if we get a client that has, or that wants Facebook ads, we've got an expert that sets up the ads uh, for us. We've got a couple of assistants, we've got a couple of graphic designers, and the overall project managers. Um, at what point I would start to outsource if I was like a new agency? Um, once you get to the point where there's people out there that can do a better job than you, or once you get to the point where you cannot do the, the work yourself because it'll just be too much. I, I always recommend doing the work yourself first, figuring out how to do it first, because if you know how to set up Facebook ads and someone else starts doing Facebook ads for you, you can see if they're doing a good job. If you do not know how to do it yourself, it's hard to coach that person, hard to see if that person is doing a good job or it's just, um, you know, just make, making a mess of it all. So uh, do it first until you get to the point where you haven't got the time to do it or you know you want to get better results and there's someone out there that can do a better job what would you do for money if smma failed um, it completely depends on like where in my journey i am um, you know if i've already got the cash flow you know i've been doing well with social media somewhere uh, down the line then I will probably transition into real estate because that is something that I want to get into in the long term anyway. Um, if that is not an option and I'd have to you know, like start again with social media uh, or something online, then I'll just focus a lot on coaching, consulting and my personal brand. I'll just go all in on that, try and provide value to the consumer, whereas social media marketing is B2B. I'll focus on the B2C, coaching, um, you know, consulting, stuff like that, and then make that you know, a viable business. Right, so the last two questions, who was your mentor with your social media marketing agency journey? Um, at the start, I watched a lot of YouTube videos of Isaac Marley and uh, Iman Gaji, then you know, started to get into it myself. I think I actually first discovered social media through Ty Lopez, then started watching those YouTube videos. Then along the way, uh, my business partner, now at the time he wasn't obviously, uh, Bradley Riley taught me you know, how to actually get clients. Um, Quentin Chad of Choose Christine showed me a bit of the, the sales and there's been like a lot of people along the way that um, I've gotten tips and advice from and all stuff like that but uh, you know those are like the main pillars of people that have helped me along the way.
And last question, advice for clients outreach on LinkedIn. I would heavily focus on relationship building rather than just doing the outreach. There's a lot of people out there nowadays that have got, you know, they've got bots, they've got automations all set up to connect with as many people as possible, send out messages to, you know, like all automated, automated messages, automated replies and stuff like that. And I think in the long run, that will not work. I think it's probably better to, you know, just build relationships with people, you know, build a network, network with people, you know, provide value back and forth. I think in the long term, that is a much better um, way of doing it, a much better strategy than just automating it because people will see that you're automating that process. You know, as personal as you try to make those messages, it will always be a generic message and people just see right through that. You know, people aren't soft. You can see right through the bullshit. So, um, LinkedIn, well, in general, actually, just think long-term, long-term relationship building over the generic automated bullshit. Okay, so uh, that is the social media agency part of the Instagram story AMA. Like the video if you've got some out there, comment down below, you know, if you've got any more questions that have anything to do with social media marketing, subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one.